Israel has scrapped plans to forcibly deport tens of thousands of illegal African migrants after failing to find a willing country to take them in. In a written response to the country's Supreme Court, the government said forced removal of the migrants is no longer on the agenda as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordered the immediate reopening of detention facilities. However, Israel's immigration authorities say they are still seeking ways to deport migrants voluntarily. The migrants will again be given uh, to rather be able to renew residency permits every 60 days as they were before the deportation push. It was a difficult time that for the asylum seekers here in Israel on the matter of being deported or being imprisoned for a lifetime. And it's good uh, news to hear that the first deportation is cancelled. And also it's a time that there should be a humanitarian solution for the asylum seekers. I am very happy to see the deportation policy is cancelled. And now it is the right time to, to the Israel government to give a solution for the asylum seeker came from Africa, a refugee status or to answer their asylum claim application. Well, let's talk to the head division of security and strategic studies at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, NIA, Dr. Shegun Bolarua. A pleasure to have you on the program. Uh, what do you make of Israel scrapping its plan to forcibly deport African migrants? After the media announcement, and even some earlier reported in that in our order, I think the outcry from the African Union, from some African governments, even from the level of the United Nations, have been able to pressurize uh, the government of Israel. And that's why they have decided to just, um, uh, they decided to just make a U-turn on saving the plans to deport uh, over 40,000 African refugees uh, that are living in Israel. So that it may be due to international pressure, not only international pressure, also the outcry from other people, and uh, they've seen the plight of this uh, middle Africa. Because most of these people that they are trying to deport, they have been they have put them uh, in a in a cage, like a cage in a particular place, their movement restricted, they feed them there, uh, they have no access to their places, their property and all of that. So they decided to save it because there have been so much public international outcry. Not only that, the United Nations, I think, also made some pressure on them. The same thing, African Union. So I think it's the reason why the government is trying to uh, make a new turn and shift the plans. Would you agree that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems to be going back and forth on the repatriation of these migrants? Well, why is this matter so controversial? The matter is so controversial because uh, citizens, human beings are involved, uh, citizens of African continents are involved, the state of Israel is involved, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, is involved. But I don't want us to treat the blames or uh, cut all of the blames on the Prime Minister Netanyahu. The reason is that he's not the Prime Minister. The entire government decides what to do. His own is just to execute it as the, prime, as the prime minister. So the parliament, this is a decision of the Israeli government, which includes both the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. So all of them are involved. So it's generally the state of Israel, the government of Israel, are taking this decision. And the symbol of the state of Israel or any state is the prime minister or the president. They're trying to listen to advice. The decision has been taken earlier, but they're trying to just also look at it, so whether it's a, uh, it's a more risk of venturing or continuing. Uh, yeah, it's not worthy or it's not worthy to continue with. They will say they will just reverse the decision. That's what they're trying to do because already some Africans have been repatriated, some have been deported. And there have been a serious outcry against it. So people see that Israel are trying to show negative attitude to Africans. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bolaiwa of the NIA, for talking to us there.
staying with migration, Libya has deported over 160 migrants from Niger back to their country as part of a voluntary deportation program that puts illegal migrants in Libya on a one-way flight to their countries. According to the head of Ms. Rata's migrant detention center, the Niger nationals deported include 46 people who were held at a detention center in Ms. Rata and 123 migrants who were living with their families in the city. The deportation program is spearheaded by the United Nations International Organization for Migration in cooperation with Libyan authorities. It is an attempt to ease severe overcrowding in detention centers. Libya is the most common departure point for migrants trying to reach Europe by sea. In South Africa, labor unions from the automotive and engineering sectors are protesting against a proposed national minimum wage of 20 rand per hour, presenting a test for new president Cyril Ramaphosa, who champions the policy. The South African Federation of Trade Unions, SAFTU, which represents 30 unions with around 800,000 members, says its workers countrywide would take part in the protest. However, supporters of the minimum wage say it will reduce inequality and stimulate economic growth as workers can spend more. capitalist agenda because they want to exploit our workers. Uh, it is important for the workers to march today to, to show the government that we reject the 20 rand minimum wage that they are putting on the table. We see it as an insult to the working class. <laughs> Well, a South African journalist, Bazukile Diko, joins us now. Hello, Bazukile. What more can you tell us about the protest? What I can tell you is that thousands of members affiliated to the South African Federation of Trade Unions took to the streets in the major metropoles in South Africa, uh, namely Johannesburg, Durban, and Cape Town, and also several other places, including the Nelson Mandela Bay uh, uh, metropole. Uh, that the, the minimum wage we understand has been approved by the cabinet but not yet implemented why do you think there is this delay it's not a delay as such it's now going through processes after Nednik did, uh, did approve uh, this amount it's now incumbent on, on, on parliamentarians this will this proposal will be tabled in parliament and then it must be passed this we do anticipate that in the second half of this year, several sectors will be approved with others to, be, uh, with others to follow early in 2019. All right, many thanks. It was a pleasure talking to you, Bazakili Diko, there in South Africa. Still to come on the program, protests in Madagascar continue for a fifth day as protesters demonstrate against new election laws. Please join us again.